so the Galapagos Islands are obviously famous for the Galapagos tortoises. Uh, the Galapagos tortoises are a set of giant tortoises that occur here on the islands of Galapagos and, and nowhere else. And they're just, they're, you know, they're a very uh, unique and important set of species. Uh, something that makes them, uh, you know, allows them to occur here is the fact that they were able to arrive to the islands when there is very few species here. Right? And so they are one of the few species here that was acting as essentially a large herbivore. And so their body, they evolved to have larger body sizes through time. They evolved into different species on islands. And so they filled lots of these roles on the islands that would normally be filled by, by other large herbivores. And so it's a very unique set of, of species. And it's a diverse set. We have different species on different islands, uh, filling different roles, adapting to their different environments, creating this kind of unique epicenter of diversity for these giant tortoises. And they've uh, really helped to epitomize the evolution that occurs in these isolated islands. Uh, some of the earliest people to come here looked at the tortoises primarily as a source of food uh, for people, for seagoing people, for, for uh, people going on long ocean voyages. The tortoises were an easy source of food. You can harvest them easily. Obviously they were slow uh, and you could put them in boats and they were very convenient in that they can live for a long time without food or water. And so you would just flip them on their back, put them in the hold of the boat, and then you would have fresh food for, for many weeks and months as you're out at sea. And so lots of different boats would stop here in Galapagos as, as using it essentially as a larder. Uh, the other problem, of course, people had with these same people is, is that uh, people, as they were going around the world, they would start to populate different islands uh, by putting out, uh, for example, goats and letting the goats go feral. And then they knew they could come back later and they could harvest the goats whenever they needed them. And so as people put goats into Galapagos, those goats began to compete with the tortoises and to cause all sorts of problems. Also other species, rats, ants, insects, all different sorts of species were arriving with the humans and causing trouble for the tortoises. We may have essentially prevented them from being able to live and to reproduce by, by uh, reducing the amount of habitat that they have and breaking the connections between different types of habitat that they depend on. And it's hard to, to predict exactly how climate change will affect any given species, but we know that's going to lead to changes. And for a place like this, where species are living under harsh conditions and they're very tightly adapted to the conditions where they live, those changes uh, are almost always going to be uh, for the worse. Their sex determination is not uh, set genetically, it's set by, by it's, 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 it has to do with the conditions under which the eggs um, incubate. And so with hotter conditions, you tend to get more female hatchlings, and with colder conditions, you tend to get more male hatchlings. This leads to skewed sex ratios. It may be that we end up with changes in kind of the genetic variability of these populations, and it could have, you know, potentially negative consequences for the persistence of these tortoises into the future. So I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with genetic modification. And I think it is a wonderful tool is, that is at our disposal. Um, you know, what I think is that, you know, we just need to, we should think about the use of some of the conventional approaches first, right? You know, I think there's a lot that we can do by preventing habitat loss and slowing climate change that, you know, will not only help these species, but has many other added benefits and are much less costly. You know, there, there's so many added benefits that, that there's no real reason not to do those things first. The Galapagos is world famous as a center of biology, a center of evolution. You know, people come from all over the world uh, to be here and to see these tortoises. And we are investing them with science, with money, with resources. And so if we can't save these species, you know, you know, what hope do we have to save other species uh, that are more important for us, but that receive much less attention? You know, people come here because they expect to see tortoises. Uh, you know, the, the Galapagos Islands are famous for a few of these emblematic species. You have some of the finches, uh, the boobies, the albatross, and the tortoises, right? People come here and they spend a lot of money to be here in order to see those tortoises. And so if they lost the tortoises, you, you know, the islands would lose much of their appeal and many few, fewer people would come. And so you can imagine that this could create a very negative feedback cycle where you have fewer people coming, fewer conservation dollars, so they continue to lose more species. The system becomes more degraded, so fewer people come. And so we can create this downward spiral where suddenly the Galapagos can go from being a place that is world famous for, 
for its biology, its evolution, for being pristine, to becoming world famous for the ecological destruction that we've, we've brought upon it.